the Ruger LC57 carbine. Let's check it out. The 7 by 28 was introduced in 1990 by FN, and it was designed as a NATO replacement for the 9mm caliber pistols. Uh, it was more of an intermediate caliber, uh, very soft to shoot, had a lot of properties. The big thing is, it's a very small round with a lightweight bullet moving at 2,000 feet per second plus. And so it really gave it a lot of ballistic capability. And then for almost 30 years, FN pretty much had the hold on 5.7. Ruger introduced their 5.7 pistol and it really changed the market. And since then, there have been a number of 5.7 handguns that have been introduced. But today we're gonna to take a look at the Ruger LC 5.7 carbine. Uh, this is in 5.7 by 28, has a 20 round mag capacity. Uh, it's just a very small, handy little firearm, light on recoil and a lot of fun to shoot. Uh, the biggest problem for 5.7 by 28 right now is the ammunition cost. The cheapest I found it is about $35 a box of 50. Uh, but prices have come down over the past year. But the Ruger 5.7 is a very handy carbine, easy to get on target. Again, that recoil is so light. So we're going to take a good look at the Ruger 5.7 carbine. And the great thing is it comes in much cheaper than the FN P90. Now we're doing a project with GetZone.com and Ruger had sent the 5.7 carbine for that project. But while I had it, I thought I want to do a full review because I love 5.7, even if it does break the bank. All right, guys, the Ruger LC carbine. This is in 5.7, or actually 5.7 by 28. Again, this was a NATO round. It's NATO approved. It's more of a personal self-defense caliber. Uh, the range is limited somewhat compared to some rifle calibers, but it gives you a lot of power with really light recoil. You know, FN, again, cornered the market, and it was really good to see Ruger coming out with their 5.7 pistol. Uh, this really kind of got things started with PSA coming up right behind them and now Ruger's come out with their carbine. Of course, kel also has a couple of options as well. But we did a review on the caliber of 5.7 versus 22 Magnum and 22 TCM, which is an arms core round. Uh, and we did ballistic testing and everything. I'll have that annotated right here above. But then when it comes to the carbine, we have a 16 and a quarter inch barrel. Uh, it is all metal construction. It's highly anodized aluminum and of course the lower is a polymer lower that goes along with that Ruger uh, grip on the 5.7 and so one of the things I really like about the carbine is that you can actually uh, put the magazine in the grip you don't have any magazine wells that are ahead of it so it really gives it a very trim appearance and of course these are 20 round magazines we're going to go ahead to make sure the guns unloaded and drop it open and it is all metal magazines, again, 20 round mag capacity, slips right into the grip very easily. Uh, but the mag release itself, uh, it's more of a lever. But on the pistol, it has that standard mag release. Uh, and one of the things about this mag release is that you can install it into this carbine or vice versa. And so it just gives it some compatibility. Also, you'll notice that the safety is more like the 1911 safety. And it's the same with the carbine. And so this is also ambidextrous, M-lock compatible rail at the front, uh, and you do have slots at 3, 6, and 9 o'clock, and then they have just opening or relief cuts here at the top. And we have a threaded barrel, half by 28 threads. It does come with Ruger labeled M-bus sights. They just flip up, 
and we have a post and it looks like one of the AR-15 posts. And the rear sight is fully adjustable. But there's Picatinny rail all along the top of the receiver and you see that the barrel is fluted. So that gives it a little bit of less weight but it also adds strength to the barrel and it is black nitrided. Non-reciprocating charging handle. Uh, this can be switched to the other side as well. And here's the other panel. Uh, these just switch one to the other. Now I really like this folding stock, which it is adjustable. Uh, you do have a cheek piece here and you have a button that releases it to the other side. And once it's locked down, I mean, it gives it some retention here and then you pull it a good satisfying snap. There is a Picatinny rail at the back. So if you want to do something different, have a different type system, you can. We have QD ports here and on the back of the receiver and that is mirrored on the other side. Uh, and ambidextrous safety as well. And your mag release can be switched to the other side. Grip has laser etch texturing all the way throughout and it gives it a really good solid feel to it. Uh, and it's the exact same grip as your pistol, has that same 1911 grip angle. But yet it does curve just a touch. And the length of pull is 12 and a half inches out to 14 and a half inches. And it is reversible to fold to the other side. Plus has a rubberized butt pad. Now with the carbine, you only get one magazine. Uh, again, it is 20 rounders. Uh, I think with the pistol, you get two. And these on the Ruger website run 53.95. Uh, I did see it in a number of places more reasonably. Now the rail is perfect for any site, uh, but we did put one of the Trijicon RMOs on there. And the weight is just under six pounds. Now this is a very balanced rifle. Everything is centered right toward the middle. Uh, it has what they call the overbolt barrel design. The bolt fits right over the barrel and it just gives it a very balanced feel to it. And we'll look at it when we break it down. Now this is a very compact rifle and the overall length with the stock collapsed is 28 and a half inches. Uh, once you collapse that stock down, it gets down to 22 and a half inches. When it comes to 223, 9mm, and 5.7, uh, as far as the comparison, these are three different NATO rounds, and they really serve three different purposes. Uh, the 9mm is really a personal defense caliber, and it's a heavier bullet, but it's moving much slower in velocity. Uh, and then we have the 5.7, which is moving at a higher velocity, up to about 2,100 feet per second, with a 40 grain bullet and it can go up to 62 grain. So the velocity is high, but the bullet is smaller. And then we have the 223 or 556, which is getting velocities up to 3,200 feet per second with a 55 grain up to 62 and above bullet weight. For longer ranges, the 223 is superior. Uh, but when it gets in close, your 5.7 has 30% less recoil than your 9 millimeter. So you're gonna be able to control the recoil a lot better for follow-up shots. Uh, when it comes to 9mm though, you know, it's going to be very effective because it just has a heavier bullet. So really, it's velocity versus bullet weight. Big thank you to Fiocchi for sponsoring our ammo, all made in the USA, one of the number one suppliers of ammunition in the country. Especially with this 5.7 because, as you guys know, it's not cheap. It's gotten cheaper, but great to have Fiocchi. One of the things I love about the 5.7 is it loads just like your AR-15, so you can just push it straight down in the magazine and it works. Guys, I'm loving to see 5.7 really being introduced to more and more handguns and, and carbines. Uh, you know, FN, for a long time, that was your only option, and it slowly started, but now we're seeing Ruger, Smith & Wesson, PSA, coming up with handguns. Great to see the carbine though, and this gives you a longer barrel, which gives you more velocity, and it's gonna give you more range. It's a very light carbine, and yet you can fold that stock over, and it makes it really compact. Uh, and, you know, Ruger just makes really good products, but, you know, the one thing about the magazine, interchangeability, right into that grip, all the same controls of your standard carbine, and it just really shoots soft. But it's flying. And of course, it comes with the adjustable sights. We threw on a little optic on here. Uh, you got a threaded barrel, M lock. I mean, it's just got all the things that you want on this carbine. And yet, you've got that 5.7. Now, 5.7 will come down in price, we'll be even better off.
but it's still fun to do a little mag dump. Now we're going to disassemble the firearm. Uh, first thing we want to do is to make sure that it is clear and it is. We have the magazine out. Now there is a pin right here at the front of the receiver right behind the handguard. It doesn't matter which way it goes out. Uh, we're going to use just a little bench block so we can give it some space. We're going to get us a punch and we're just going to push this pin right out just like that. And again it doesn't matter which way it goes. There is a spring detent right here on this pin. Next we're going to take the grip and we're just going to pull it back toward us and then just loosen it up. Um, and as you can see, the inside, uh, definitely very reminiscent of the pistol. Next we're going to take the charging handle and we're just going to pull it into the rear position. And once we get it to the back, we can take this part of the bolt and we can pull it right out. Now it does have a two-piece bolt system. And so then we take, let it go, we're going to take the recoil spring, push it forward, and then we're going to bring it out. It does have a buffer here at the end just to soften up things. Now we're going to bring our charging handle back and the bolt just rolls right along the rails. And that's the rear piece of the bolt. Now on the larger part of the bolt you'll notice this little locking piece and it fits right into the front locking piece. So you'll need to remember that when we reassemble it. But it just locks right into place. But this does give us a fairly heavy mass bolt and that's going to really help in operation. But it's very well machined. And guys, really, that's all you need to do to field strip the firearm. It's very simple. You can see the black nitrided barrel here. And then, of course, the handguard can be taken off with these three screws. You can change the charging handle to the other side, really by removing the handguard. And then you'll just slip these panels right out. And then you can just switch it. It's not really a big deal. Now for reassembly, you just, again, want to make sure that this cutout area is toward the back when you drop it in. And then we're just going to move it forward. Then we're going to take our recoil spring and we're going to go ahead and put it into place just like that. Then we're going to bring our bolt back to where we can lock it with the rear part of the bolt. Just like that. It locks down. You release the charging handle and we're back in business. Now here we have a lip at the front and this goes into the handguard. This section right here, you'll see that it actually has a little slot underneath. So when we put this in, we have to go from the very back first. So make sure that this is right in that slot. So when it goes forward, just like this, and then here it will meet with the handguard. If there's any space in between, you know that you're off. And when putting back in your pen, you see this little spring, it's a detent spring. You want to make sure that it's facing the back of the receiver because there's a little slot inside. We can just push it down and push it through. Actually it goes in pretty easily. Next, we're going to test for function. Go ahead and rack it, pull the trigger, and we're good to go. The price on the Ruger LC carbine in 5.7 is $1,009. And of course, at your local gun shop, prices will be less. Pros and cons of the Ruger LC carbine. Uh, first off, it's a very compact, well-balanced firearm. A lot of that has to do with the way the bolt system is set up right here in the center of the rifle. Uh, fluted barrel, uh, very well done, it's threaded, ready to go for any kind of suppressor. Uh, of course, you have your backup iron sights. You have plenty of real estate for, for optics. Of course, the grip in the magazine, again, helps this to be more compact. 20-round uh, magazines, which gives you a decent capacity, and there are even extended magazines out there. Uh, and all steel, great mags. Now, your folding stock is definitely a big plus. It is fully adjustable. And it makes this very compact. The thing is, guys, is this could be great for truck gun or backpack gun. It just makes it really just that lightweight size and compact. Uh, ambidextrous controls. And then, of course, again, that balance is really nice on this rifle. Uh, as far as cons go, uh, first off is ammunition cost. Now, I did see some ammunition from Palmetto State Armory that was down to $30 a box. And so that's really starting to get the price down. So as long as we're seeing the prices come down on 5.7, I mean, that's a huge bonus. Uh, it got up to $50 a box pretty across the board for a while, and that was just really too expensive. It is a centerfire caliber, so you can reload as well. 
again, fully ambidextrous and you can change the charging handle around. Uh, fairly easy to disassemble and to keep and maintain. All metal construction on the top, which gives it some durability. It mates really well with the 5.7 pistol. And the recoil is very low, and that is a big plus for this rifle. Uh, it's very easy to shoot, very easy to get follow-up shots really quickly. And really, about anybody that can hold this rifle up can shoot it, because it's just a very pleasant gun to shoot. You're not going to get the range you do with an AR-15, but you're going to get better range than you will with a 9mm carbine. So it gives you a little more advantage there. But overall, it's just great to see 5.7 really coming into its own, a number of different firearms. You know, whether it's the Ruger, the Palmetto State Armory, Smith & Wesson, kel and then there's a number of other ones. And plus, there's a lot of different specialty ammos that have been developed for the 5.7, and hopefully those prices will also start to come down. Been very excited about the 5.7 carbine from Ruger. Brings that price down, but guys, I mean, there's a lot of great features with this. Makes it very compact, handy, easy to stow away, and the recoil is about nil. Uh, if we can get that ammo price even farther down, it's going to make it even more appealing. But guys, it is a great gun to take out to the range. I mean, guys, we've been seeing those standard calibers just rehashed over and over, and it's great to see calibers that are up and coming and companies like Ruger putting out some great rifles. And again, a big thank you to GetZone for putting us together with Ruger. And guys, check out GetZone.com. It is the most Second Amendment friendly video platform out there. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. intermediate cal cal and it was one of those <laughs> is that we can bring around our scope we're gonna bring this scope around let's bring the scope you can flip that scope around uh, it was made guys it's great to see five seven coming out of the magazine <laughs> guys great to see five seven really coming edit out bull crap <laughs> or just delete it Delete the whole thing, just yeah. screw it. <laughs> and I mean, it makes a really small package. And so it's, you know, feature rich. Feature rich. It's rich in features. It's rich in little features. That little feature.